So this would have been, who, when exactly did this happen? So this was at the Virginia Beach Regional Tournament. It would have been just before the San Francisco Nationals. It was a fall national. So I'm guessing it would have been 2012. So that's, oh my God, that's like over 10 years ago. I feel so old now. Right. So I was playing, I forget who our teammates were, but I was playing with Greg Humphreys um, because I guess at the time he was either still a professor at University of Virginia, which was where I had attended school recently, but we were both living in Charlottesville at the time, um, which is where the university is. And we were playing a bracket one knockout. Our opponents were uh, Kevin Dwyer in the West seat and his sponsor, Cookie Potter, in the East seat. So this was the auction. I held a hand that looks like this. I'm not 100% certain I remember the cards. We don't have hand records for these regional events, um, especially for the team game. So I can't be 100% confident this was the exact deal, but I think I got the essence of what went down at the table. So it went pass pass. West opened a spade. This is Kevin Dwyer. Take out double by Greg. Uh, two spades on my right. I bid three hearts with my five card heart suit. Maybe a little aggressive, but we're a passed hand. Pass, four hearts by partner. I'll pass. And we got the ace of spades lead. Um, so this was the dummy. And, you know, it's teams. You can tell Greg was a little aggressive with just some sort of balanced hand. Uh, again, not fully confident that this was what went down at the table or that these were the exact hands, but it was something like this. So after the ace of spades held trick one, we got a spade continuation. I won the king. I saw the queen from east. And I next tried the heart finesse. So queen of hearts to the king. Back came another spade to the 10. East played the jack on this trick. I roughed. And I cashed the ace of hearts. Everyone followed. So at this point in time, you know, we're looking at the hand. A club finesse is very likely to be working with uh, Kevin on my left having opened the bidding with one spade. We have a diamond loser. The ace of diamonds is still um, outstanding and we need to pick up the diamond suit for just one loser. So obviously the normal play would be to like play a diamond to the king eventually, play a diamond to the 10, take some finesses, make our contract. There's still the matter of there's one more trump remaining. And of course the fact that uh, we might get tapped out at some point along the way if we're not too careful. But so I pulled the last trump. My left hand opponent turned up with the third heart. East pitched a club, not unexpected. I mean, if East does not have the club king, then they might think, why should I ever hold on to the clubs? I led a diamond to the king, and East won the ace. And back came the two diamonds. And I put up the queen on this trick. Now, you might think, well, this is crazy. Right? Because in addition to picking out the diamonds, uh, like just winning two diamond tricks, we still have to deal with this fourth round of diamonds, the eight. So this is only going to work if West had started with Jack Doubleton. Well, lo and behold, the Jack of Diamonds pops up. I played a club to the queen, I played a diamond to the eight, and I claimed 10 tricks. And this was the last board of the set. So I showed my hand, I claimed, and I started shuffling up my cards and Kevin's uh, sponsor, the East player, was like, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, um, you know, I, I patiently waited and explained to them what you know, how I was taking the rest of the tricks. I have a good diamond, the ace of clubs is good, and I have a trump. And so eventually I like shuffled my cards up and put them away. I didn't think much of it. 
you know, we, we obviously won a bun bundle of imps on this hand because we bid and made game. Um, but it, it didn't occur to me that this was like some sort of special hand. I, I was kind of used to taking a lot of tricks when I played. Um, hashtag humble brags. And so this to me was just like another routine hand where I had guessed very well. So the next day, I am getting breakfast. I'm sitting by myself because I have no friends and mostly because Greg, I think, was like on some sort of conference call uh, for work. And Kevin Dwyer comes over to me and sits down across from me at like whatever the breakfast place was. It was like an IHOP or something. And he joins me at breakfast and he's just like, okay, you have to explain to me how you made four hearts. And because he was just like, well, why would you not put in the 10 of diamonds? You know, it's just crazy to not take this diamond finesse. And I looked at him and I said, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen a sponsor lead away from an honor. And so that's kind of what was going through my mind. Like I, I was originally planning on taking the diamond finesse, um, but when I led a diamond to the king and East won the ace and East was just like, was like, ah, no care in the world. Let's lead back the two diamonds. There's something that less experienced players or weaker players do when they're leading away from an honor. They like, they like hold their cards closer to their chest. They look like, you know, real fidgety and they're just like, oh, I hope Declare doesn't take the finesse. Um, and I didn't get any of those vibes. So it sounded to me as if Kevin was sitting on the Jack of Diamonds and my best chance to make the contract, therefore, was to hop up with the queen, which is what happened. So I didn't really explain all of that to him. I, I basically just said what I said and moved on. And he was just like, well, listen, because I have an opening for the uh, two-day board match in San Francisco next month. Are you interested in playing? It's gonna be four-handed, we don't have a sponsor, um, but we got some good players, and the players that we got were Tim Verbeek and Danny Mulner from ne the Netherlands, a pretty regular partnership. I think we saw them playing on the S Patricia Kane team in the most recent Solway knockouts, so they're still playing together. But, yeah, so he invited me onto the team and I played with him. Um, we didn't have a great showing and I found out that I wasn't nearly as good as I thought I was at the time. Um, but it was still kind of a big deal because that put me like on the radar of a bunch of the uh, better players. They saw me playing with Kevin and on a pretty strong team. 